Arnold Murray. Join with us now as Pastor Murray takes you on a book by book, chapter by chapter, line by line study of God's Word. Now, here is Pastor Murray. All right, good day to you. God bless you. Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. We just praise God for the privilege of being able to study His Word with you. You know, man's word sometimes can be reassuring, comforting, but then you've always got to go double check it out in God's word, so why not just stay in the word and have the assurity that you're on the right track? That's the way I feel about it, and that's why we have the format of teaching chapter by chapter and letting our Father speak rather than man. I think it has its dividends that we reap from following that format. I thank him for that privilege in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We continue our study in the last lecture on Antichrist documented. The, the scholars down through the years seem to drift and wander and one says this and one that and the, those that have to go by other man's commentaries learn it's the most confusing subject in the world. But when you stick to your father's word, it's not confusing at all. We found that Satan has the same method of operation in the last lecture in the world it was that he used, will use in this one, and uh, we'll go into the pit, that lake of fire. How precious the word of God. Now, we know that Antichrist... Uh, is Satan. But how do you document that? A lot of people say, well, it's this man or it's that man, and there's where they're going to be deceived. They're looking for a mortal man for Satan to enter into. When Satan comes to this earth, he won't need a body to enter into. He's coming in his own. It's a role he's wanted to fill for a long time. He was in this earth uh, at various times before Christ uh, prohibited him from traveling to this earth. His spirit's here basically, evil spirits. But let's continue the study, if we may, in documenting the fact that the Antichrist is Satan himself. Open your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to pick it up with verse 1. Let's document that it is Satan who will come as Antichrist. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 1, and it reads, Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. What Paul is really saying here, and it loses it in the translation, I'm going to boast a little bit. I don't like to boast. It embarrasses me to brag on myself. But I want you to listen, and I want you to listen good, is what he said. Verse 2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. In other words, he had brought them into Christianity, and he was jealous over them that they would go wrong. For I have espoused you to one husband. You are engaged to one husband and one husband only, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ, speaking in the spiritual sense. In other words, what is obvious, Paul is concerned, they're going to fall off to a false Christ, and instead of Christ, Antichrist, someone other than Jesus, Messiah. Verse 3, wise up. But I fear. What was he suspicious of? What was his fear? You're going to learn right here. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind shall be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ the very simplistic manner in which Christ taught concerning the coming of Antichrist in Mark 13, Matthew 24, Luke 21, that there would be some that could not comprehend who he was talking about. Now, Jesus himself said in Matthew 24, it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. They're going to be taken and given in marriage to fallen angels before Christ returns to this earth. Who was Eve seduced by? Satan, the serpent. That's the title he carried at that time. Verse 4, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, that's instead of Jesus or any other 
God or Savior, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, other than the Holy Spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. In other words, what he's saying here is if you find a better one, you'd better bear with him or you like it. You like to hear those stories is what he's saying. I like to add a little footnote. You swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Some people just like to be deceived. The sim simple method that God put forth that we could in identify our enemy, and yet man likes to cloud the water. Verse 5, For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostle. This word chiefest in the Greek means super. We call them today super preachers. He said, I probably know more about our Father's word than those super preachers even know. Verse 6, But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. I've proved what I've taught you over and over and over. That's what Paul's saying. How? From the word of God and through miracles performed, giving credentials that he was teaching the word of God. Now, what is the subject here? You know, Greek is very specific. It's not difficult to follow the point. Paul is afraid before that wedding day, before those ten virgins pick up their lamps, he, he was um, jealous and he, he had a fear that many would be deceived and would try to wed another Jesus, another Messiah. He gets right to the point, starting with verse 12. Skip there with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. We're going to document that Satan is coming to this earth as an angel of light, as a Jesus, as a Savior. So it will once and all do away with the big question, who is Antichrist? So that you can prepare yourself mentally for the supernatural that will soon be upon you. Listen carefully. Verse 12. Paul had continued on talking about these super preachers and how that they had uh, fed this line of malarkey to the people and so forth and how they enjoyed it. Paul continues on then. But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion. And I'm going to pull the rug right out from under them. That's what I'm going to do, Paul said. Um, from them which desire occasion, when any time they're ready for it, that wherein they glory, in other words, what he's saying, the main thing they do it for is their own glory anyway, are finances, money. They're not doing it for the Father, not for the reasons Paul did. That they may be found even as we. In other words, check them over real close. Make sure they're not in it for their own glory, but they do it as Paul did. Paul never took, he didn't take anything from the church. Unfortunately, the super preachers do. 13. Now sharpen up for me. For such are false apostles. That means, what is an apostle, first of all, so you don't get all worked up here and, not, and miss the point. An apostle, it means one sent forth of God. They are false sent forth from God people. God didn't send them, in other words. Deceitful workers. What is a deceitful worker? One that deceives the people that don't know any better. Transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Do you know what this word transforming formed is in the Greek? It's disguising themselves. Do you understand a disguise like a wolf in sheep's clothing. 14, now you listen if you ever listen to a verse of Scripture in your life. And no marvel, there's no big deal about it. For Satan, who? Satan himself. Not in this party, not in that party, but Satan himself is transformed. The word in the Greek is disguised so that we don't have anyone that says, oh, there's the restitution of all things. Satan's going to be saved. That's not what it's saying. It's Satan himself is coming disguised as an angel of light. 
meaning Messiah, only it's instead of Jesus. Now, if you want to know who the Antichrist is, you'd better get your ears on, and you'd better listen to your Father's Word and stop listening to these piddling little would-be scholars of God's Word that would lead you astray and participate in the deceit that has come upon the world at this time and understand who Antichrist is. Satan himself. 15, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers, that's his seed, the Kenites, and those would-be great scholars, they push forth upon the people, also be transformed or disguised as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works, who in the end it shall be according to their works. They're going to hell for misleading people. Doom and deception will be their own lot. That's what it really says. 16, I say again, let no man think me a fool. If otherwise, yet as a fool, receive me. See, in other words, Paul was bragging. He says, I'm better than they are. I have more knowledge than they do. I know who Antichrist is. It's Satan himself. That I may boast myself a little. Let me just brag a little bit on my knowledge. I know who Antichrist is. It's Satan. If you want to listen to the other babblers, swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Go ahead. But at any time I'm ready to, I can take the word of God and pull the carpet right out from under them. 17. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as if it were foolishness in this confidence of boasting. So he did boast seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. If they're a bunch of braggarts, let me brag also. And then he went ahead and laid the law down to them. But the point is proved. Satan himself shall come disguised as an angel of light. Well, I've never read that in the Bible before, haven't you? It's well written and documented. We've covered scripture in this lecture, Antichrist documented, right up to that. So the best thing we should do, rather than me, that is to say myself saying it, is to turn there and let God speak to you concerning when it is that Satan comes disguised as an angel of light. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 12. Do you not remember that I told you that this 12th chapter goes even into the world that was for you that can yank the blinders off for a minute and get your head away from the pulpits of this nation and back into the Word of God a little bit to learn a little truth. Uh, you have some good teachers, but I assure you, your chances of finding one are slim because they do not teach the Word of God. They play church. Does it sound hard? I intended it to because they are deceiving the people as to the appearance of Antichrist in the near future and putting it in swaddling clothes around the rapture theory. And they're going to lead a bunch of people to Antichrist. When is Satan coming to this earth? Document that for me. I'd be most happy to. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was, remember, we're just about to reach the end of this earth age, just before the millennium. And there was war in heaven, not on earth, friends, in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Now remember, Satan uses names which are titles that gives you the role he is playing, whereby in a prophetic sense, you know what to be on guard against when he appears. So sharpen up and learn from your Father's Word. 8. And prevail not. Satan lost. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. In other words, Satan was no longer allowed in paradise. He couldn't go as he did even back in Job's time, Job's time and appear before the throne of God with the, his little angels and the others. 9. And the great dragon was cast out. Do you understand the great dragon was cast out from heaven, the same old dragon of Revelation 13 that deceives the world and heals the wound to the one world beast system. <clears throat> the old great dragon, which is the devil himself. Document that, I'll be happy to read on. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. The serpent was the role that he played in the garden in the seduction of Eve. 
the seduction we just read of. Well, it said beguiled. My friend, you check that out in the Greek. Expatio means she was wholly seduced. She was no longer a virgin. She lost her virginity. That is the subject and the topic of, of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 2 and 3. And that's what Paul said he was worried about was you not being a virgin, spiritually speaking, when Christ returns to this earth. Satan is cast out of heaven. That old serpent called the devil. There's you another name, three of them. And Satan, four, another yet. You want to add a few more? Lucifer, the little horn, the desolator, Apollyon, on and on to the scholar. God's letting you know he plays roles. He's not difficult to identify in the simplicity in which Christ taught, which deceiveth the whole world. How much of it? Well, all, all but the good churches. No, my dear friend, the whole world, with the exception of God's elect, there would be no flesh saved. Does that mean they're going to hell? No, it means they're going to be deceived because they're being misled by false teachers, not knowingly, but in ignorance of, to our Father's Word because they have listened to the commentaries of man rather than reading the simplicity of Christ's teachings. It is very obvious that Satan is Antichrist and you're finding out here how he comes to this world to deceive it. He was cast out into the earth, bodily, physically, he and his angels were cast out with him. Do you not understand now why Jesus said in Matthew 24 it's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah when those fallen angels and Ephelium came and took the daughters of Adam? And they're going to do it again. And that's why Paul said, women, keep your veil on. That means keep your head covered to hide yourself from the angels. He was looking forward prophetically to that time when they're being cast from heaven to this earth. It is quite simple. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Where is Christ at this time? He's sitting at the right hand of God in heaven. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Do you understand why you have problems? God, uh, uh, Satan right now has audience with God. Every time you disappoint our father, there stands the accuser saying, Aha, father, did you see what that one did? And it hurt your father. That's happening right now, but it's not going to happen much longer. For this war in heaven is about to prevail. It's just about to take place. And do you know what's going to happen then? Let's read of it, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the power of Jesus Christ, the same power and authority you have on him on this earth, and you'd better not forget it. And by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death, even back to the apostles and the crucifixions, etc., in the deaths of those that stood up for the truth. 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. In other words, up here in heaven we can rejoice. And ye that dwell in them, be happy in heaven. Woe to the inhabitants, inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil. There's his name. The devil is come down unto you. How has he come down? As Antichrist. Wake up having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Do you understand that? Not since Christ's crucifixion. That time he's throwing out that he has only a short time. Three and a half years before it was shortened by Jesus Christ for the elect's sake in Mark 13, Matthew 24. He's coming to this earth as Antichrist, Satan, the old devil, the dragon, whatever name you want to call him. Not some man from the Middle East. If you want to get yourself fooled, you just listen to a false teacher that will give you a bunch of bunk like that. It's Satan cast from heaven onto this earth, performing miracles in the supernatural, for he is supernatural. We have the power over him, and we don't have to fear one iota. The temptation has been removed from you because you have the seal of God in your mind, which simply means his truth. You know it is Satan. He's not tempting to you one iota. He's repulsive. 
but to the church that looks for the rapture when Satan is cast out and says, I've come to take you home, they're going to climb on board his little wagon with, the, with, um, uh, with deception and with illusions shall he deceive the world with miracles that man has never dreamed of because they're not mentally prepared for this moment. That's why those in heaven said, woe to you inhabitants of earth. There'll be some say, well, I'm not worried because we're going to fly away. You're not going anywhere, friend. I say, I say to you, you're going to see this come to pass, for it will happen in this generation. If you don't believe it now, believe it when it comes to pass, or you're going to be jumping on his bandwagon because he's going to be saying, I am God. I am Jesus. But he's instead of Christ. He shall come first. Do you not remember in the first lecture, Paul said, before Jesus returns with his angels, there are two things that must happen. A great falling away by the people changing their religion to worship the son of perdition, which is Satan cast from the heavens to the earth, sitting in the temple of God saying that he is God. You might say, well, that's not what it said in 2 Thessalonians. No, that's what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians, married with 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And uh, the verses concerning the fact that Satan's come in disguise as an angel of light, make sure he doesn't seduce you as he did Eve. Paul couldn't have made it any clearer to those that have ears to hear. Verse 13, and when the dragon, now we've changed names, my dear one. Do you have your ears on? He was called the devil in the prior verse. He's called the dragon here. Why? Because in this verse, he's playing the role of the dragon, the old dragon again, nothing new under the sun, to, de to deceive the woman, true Israel, and those that are adopted in it through Christ. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. He persecuted that mother Eve, the mother of all living, because Christ was born through her. That is to say, her offspring, the daughters. Satan has tried to defeat those daughters from the beginning of time. He will persecute her again, not with pain, but wooing her. Do you know why I know he'll be wooing her? Listen to the next verse, 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, times and a half time. That's three and a half years, my dear friend. But don't worry about three and a half years. It's been shortened for the elect's sake. For, from the face of the serpent. What name is this? The serpent. You were tutored in a verse above that he's called the dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan. What is this rolled serpent? The seducer, the beguiler. Oh, my dear children, I've come to carry you home. I love all of you. It won't hurt. Listen to me. I'm a scripture lawyer. That's what he'll be saying. Do you have ears to hear? It's so simple when you understand your father's word concerning Antichrist, and then men have the audacity to deceive people, to have them mentally expecting some idiot from the Middle East or somewhere to stand up saying he's God Almighty that couldn't snap his fingers and cause anything to happen. But you're going to get a supernatural Satan, the old dragon, the devil, the serpent himself, himself, as Paul so illustrated, disguised as an angel of light, which is to say Lucifer in the Hebrew tongue. That's what it means. And the serpent, this is his little courtship role, friend, cast out of his mouth, wa uh, his ma mouth water as a flood after the woman, a flood of lies that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Any of you women ever had some slick mouth talker try to talk to you and carry you away with his tongue? That's what it's talking about, to put legs right on it. A sweet talker, a flood of lies. Oh, it'll be all right. Come on home. Come on home. And the earth helped the woman. 
And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Don't forget, we're going to have two witnesses that control the rain at the time this takes place. Do you understand? And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. There's only a very small remnant that even is going, will know what's happening at this time. Do you have ears to hear and do you have a destiny? which keep the commandments of God. They're not deceived and they don't listen to the super preachers that are false prophets. They listen to the word of God and his commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What is the testimony of Jesus Christ? Turn to Mark 13. Let's, let us hear what Jesus has to say about uh, the, the, his coming and how it shall be, whether or not there will be an antichrist and uh, who he is. Mark 13 Jesus has taught here, he has said, they said, what's it going to be like just before you return? He said, don't let any man deceive you because the Antichrist is coming first. There will be false preachers coming in Christ's name saying, I'm Christ's preacher. Christ anointed me. Christ ordained me. I am a, ordained from a Christ church, a Christ ministry, and they are nothing but liars and deceived from the word themselves because they cannot understand the simplicity of the teachings of Christ as it flows from the Word when it is formulated in the manner in which He intended it. And He told him, He said, Don't you worry, there's going to be rumors of wars and wars, but when you hear of peace, then worry. What Jesus does, He gives seven truths in this chapter concerning His return. One that He gave he, after, after declaring you're going to be delivered up to him. He's going to woo you, try to convert you. You're not to premeditate what you will say before that hour, but what is given you will be the Holy Spirit speaking through you. The example of that tongue spoken on Pentecost Day, that sample exam um, explained by Joel the prophet that the sons and the daughters would bring forth after the locust army, Satan's army, the Apollyon, the dragon, the serpent, the seducer was loosed upon this earth. That's what Joel was talking about. And people call it babble and travel and deceive people by the multitudes, the millions and the thousands, and call it religion. It is a lie. It is a false teaching. And at the same time, those that would wrap up and deceive people into a flyaway thing when it is not written in God's Word. We must make that stand, for these events shall transpire. What did Jesus say? A warning given you in the 14th verse of this 13th chapter of Mark. Friend, this is not my words. These are the words of Jesus. Listen to them. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not. Moffat translates this, he ought not, because he is a scholar of the Hebrew. It does not say desolation in Daniel. It says the desolator, Satan himself, come in the form of Antichrist. The desolator, standing where he ought not. Where is that? In the cities of Jerusalem, in the temple of God, showing the world that he is God, claiming to be God. Let him that readeth understand. You that have ears to hear, sharpen up. That's what Jesus means. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Where is Judea? That's the state in which Jerusalem lies, so that you know the geographical location. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. If you're a watchman on top and you see Antichrist appear, you won't need a change of clothes, friend. It's over. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. You won't need a change of clothes. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. That means those that, as Paul feared, will be seduced by the instead of Jesus rather than remaining virgins and pure when the true Christ returns. It is so simple. It is, and to them that give suck in those days, that means even nursing along the work of Satan and at the same time calling themselves Christians. There's just one fact. There are a bunch of Christians that have taken part in the apostasy, the falling away, and are worshiping, and instead of Jesus, instead of Jesus. They're instead of Christians because they've been led and deceived. 18, and pray you that your flight be not in the winter, the harvest 
is the summer, not winter. It's a cold winter day when Satan is cast from heaven. 19, I'm not speaking literally, but spiritually. For in those days shall be affliction. This is tribulation. This is Antichrist tribulation, and you're going to be here. Not God's tribulation, Antichrist tribulation, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Never will there be a time of deception because of Satan himself released upon the people to deceive them. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh, underline it, no flesh, should be saved but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, not volunteered, he hath chosen from even the conflict that was, if you will, he has shortened the days. That time is shortened, and that's why no one can know the day or hour. Not a three and a half year period. Verse 21. And then if any man, this is Jesus speaking. And then if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there. Believe him not. When they tell you that Christ has returned to Jerusalem and you're still in this chunk of meat, this flesh body, the seventh trump hasn't sounded and Christ will not have returned to this earth. And he's a fake, that one that calls himself Christ. Friend, I didn't say that. Jesus did. Satan himself disguised as, instead of Jesus, an angel of light, come to bring peace to the world. And he shall. It'll be very difficult to speak against. Christ then continues to say, for false Christs, plural, yes, because him and his false ministers and the ones that already teach the falsehood and ignorance and false prophets shall rise. Did he say maybe? No, he said shall. In other words, the Antichrist will appear before Jesus does and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Are you ready for it? A very short season. It's going to happen. But take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. I want real quickly to turn one more scripture in closing. Daniel those of you that have not studied the book of Daniel with me, acquire the tapes on the book of Daniel or catch it on television as it is being retaught. He was had Jesus made this book of Daniel a part of the New Testament when you say when he said, when you see what Daniel was talking about standing, it would be at the end of the age, not the Old Testament, but the new. He was speaking of verse 27 of the ninth chapter in the book of Daniel. This is the seventh, 70th week with the gap theory meaning at the end of the age. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That's seven years. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. That's the daily offering. Our holy communion will cease in the middle of that because people will think that Christ has returned and they will be taking communion with instead of Jesus. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. I want to read it to you from the Hebrew. This is why Dr. Moffat translates it. You with companion Bibles, it will instruct you. You with strong concordances, check out this word abominations and you will find, uh, or rather, this overspreading made it desolate. You will find the word is desolator. And what it really says is, and on the wings, you listen to me, coming on a cloud as on the wings, as a desolator, that's an entity, not a condition, even unto the consummation, right up until the end of this age is consummated, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolator. Christ will have the victory. Michael, I feel it will be, will lock him in the pit. I have no problem whatsoever with teaching. Satan is Antichrist. He would let no one else fill that role. Be aware of the false ark. It's coming. Well, bless your hearts. I hope you've enjoyed these lectures. Listen a moment. I want to share something with you. The first six chapters of Genesis, we like to call it the Tate series 146. What an introduction.